Today, I'm going to predict where Kyler Murray, Marquise Brown, and Cody Ford will go in the first round of the NFL Draft, and all that's coming up after the bump. What do you mean oh. you don't subscribe to my son's YouTube channel? Mama, no! Just snap the damn ball, RJ. What's up, kid folk? It's RJ Young. I am not on a step mill. Consider hitting the like and subscribe button because I upload a video every single day. It's always OU related, college football related, sports related. We have a good time. And today, I want to talk about where I think Kyler Murray, Marquise Brown, and Cody Ford are going to go in the NFL draft ahead of my conversation with Dave Sittler and Patrick Masick on the Sports Animal. And if you don't listen to my show, fight me at 10 a.m. on Sundays. I'm going to ask you why. Also, getting into this, I found this really interesting article in this take. So, 538 took a look at 2,000 mock drafts. First thing is, I didn't know that there were 2,000 mock drafts. But apparently, there are 2,000, and they looked at all of them to analyze what they found. And I like some of the predictions that they came up with. One of which is, one of the Ole Miss wide receivers, if not both of them, are going to get drafted in the first round. That'd be A.J. Brown and internet sensation D.K. Metcalf, along with Iowa tight ends Noah Fant and T.J. Hawkinson. Hawkinson seems to be the more traditional tight end, the guy that is the better blocker, and the guy who can do a lot of the dirty work that tight ends have to do in the NFL. Fant is much more of that Y-type receiver that you might see at Oklahoma that can get vertical, get long, and is huge. You might actually call him a split in in a different era of football. The other one is that Josh Allen, Quentin Williams, and of course Nick Bosa are all going to get drafted in the first round because pass rushers, edge rushers seem to be at not just a premium in the league, but yeah, kind of have a bevy of them in this draft. This is a very good defensive line draft. One of the better ones that I've been around to see. And, you know, I've only been on this earth for 30 plus years. But you get my point there. Now, as far as my predictions for Kyler Murray, Cody Ford, and Marquise Brown, I'm going against the field. I still think that Kyler Murray's going to not go number one overall for reasons that I've already talked about in previous videos this week. But I also just think that it makes sense to trade out of that spot and or take a defensive talent at the number one position if you really do want to use that pick. But I don't necessarily think that that's the way that Steve Kime and the Cardinals should be going. You were the worst team in football for a reason. That's why you get to draft number one. Trade out of that spot. Go get picks and stockpile to go get you some guys to help Patrick Peterson, to help Chandler Jones, and to fill out the offensive line around a Josh Rosen. I also don't necessarily like the Arizona Cardinals organization. I'm on record as saying that too. I just think that Kyler Murray could go to a better situation where they don't have a quarterback that they drafted in the first round the year before. Maybe the Raiders want him, but there's scuttlebutt about the Raiders wanting Dwayne Haskins. Who knows with John Gruden and Mike Mayock. Apparently, they kicked out their entire scouting staff so they could call this draft on their own. And then you got Dan Snyder who decided to kick everybody out of the room and said the first round of the draft belonged to me, and then y'all go back to work. And I'm going, yo. So I think that Kyler Murray probably ends up sliding, if not to the Raiders, then probably out of the first round where somebody trades up to go get him. Not the Dolphins, but perhaps the Redskins because, yeah, Dan Snyder has made those sorts of moves before because he did it with RG3. What does it say he won't do it with Kyler Murray? Be cool to see Kyler Murray and Adrian Peterson in the same backfield, but I don't necessarily think that would make for good football. And, yes, I know some Aj P. Ryan is still there, but so is Darius Geis, and he's coming back, so we'll see what happens on their depth chart. I think Cody Ford is a lot to go 23 to the Texans. No quarterback was destroyed more than Deshaun Watson, and you know that there's only one addition to that entire offensive line they're gonna need help he is a mauler at right tackle he gave up something like just 14 QB pressures in uh, or eight QB pressures in 14 games something stupid a guy that developed into a first round draft pick after not having played the position before in his life all of the drafts that I look like that I looked at have Cody Ford going number 23 to Texans and I don't see any reason why he shouldn't be I get interested though with the whole Dan Snyder Redskins deal and then I look at Marquise Brown and I see that Baltimore doesn't really have a vertical threat on their entire roster. Like, at the top of their depth chart is Willie Sneed. And if you're going to have a run-dominated offense, and you are because Lamar Jackson is your quarterback, you're going to need to be able to throw the ball deep on play action. And who better to stretch the field in this class than Marquise Brown? And if you're sure that you want to go with a wide receiver, and it looks like they are, that's going to be the best dude to fit your needs. He can get off the line of scrimmage. He is a huge asset when it comes to being able to just get away from people. His yak yards after catch is ridiculous. 
and you can do some gimmicky stuff in the backfield with him and Lamar Jackson that is just going to give defense coordinators not fits, but a different look that they're going to have to account for. He seems to fit all the needs. So I got Kyler Murray traded up. The Redskins go get him. I got Cody Ford going to Houston, the Texans. And, of course, I have my man Hollywood Brown going to the Ravens at number 22, just ahead of Cody Ford at 23. And as far as mock draft goes, Evan Silva went not just 28 of 32 last year, but 28 of 32 picking which teams these guys would end up with. So I'm looking at his 2019 draft, and it's got trades in it, and I've got to go, whoa, that's a lot. So he's got, for instance, Jeffrey Simmons going 17 to the Dolphins after a trade with the Giants. He's got Rashawn Gary going number 15 to the Lions after a trade with the Redskins. I mean, he's got Daniel Jones going to the Giants at 13, not 6, after a trade with the Dolphins. He's got TJ Hawkinson going to the Packers at number 12. And, of course, he has Hollywood Brown and Cody Ford going number 22 to the Ravens and number 23 to the Texans, respectively. I found it really interesting that he also believes that Josh Jacobs is going to be a Raider at number 24. And then it gets a little kind of scary with the Raiders drafting Noah Fant at number 27, but that that would fit. That seemed to be what they kind of want to do. But also, these moves inspire me to think that maybe John Gruden wants to go a different way with the way he wants to call games, but then I remember that's John Gruden that's doing the play call, and John Gruden is real stubborn. Anyway, let's get into my conversation with Patrick Masick and Dave Sittler. Mel Kiper Jr. Player Profile. I call him the diminutive dynamo. He played with Baker Mayfield. He played with Kyler Murray. And it didn't matter who the quarterback was. He was making big plays down the field. And the underrated part of his game that nobody talks about is how he makes a tough catch in the middle of the field and underneath and then make uh, big-time plays after the catch. Tons of yardage after the catch for Marquise Brown. He had a catch of 50 or more yards in seven of nine games at one point this year. Then he had the Liz Frank surgery on his foot January 8th. That's the injury that kind of made it a question mark as to where he should go in the draft. But Marquise Hollywood Brown, when he's 100%, was the best receiver in the country and the most dynamic offensive weapon in the entire nation. We'll see where Hollywood Brown goes tonight with the first round of the NFL draft happening. RJ Young joins us. I'm looking at the, uh, again, this is just ESPN's big board, if you will. They have Marquise as the number 11 overall player, period. Um, which is obviously really good for a guy coming off uh, an injury who wasn't able to work out uh, in, in, in the pre-draft process. Nonetheless, it'll be interesting to see where he falls and, and how a team eventually uses him. But with his explosiveness, when he's right, uh, Marquise Brown will help a lot of people win, especially considering, you know, chance he's drafted middle, uh, middle portion, maybe the middle third of the first round. He's going to go to a team that's probably pretty good already. I don't think so. I think he's going to fall to Baltimore at number 22. Okay. That makes a lot of sense. Uh, they run the ball. They run it hard. They have a, a running quarterback that they built an offense out yep. of thin air to make work. And the top of your depth chart is Willie Sneed. <laughs> I mean, you don't really have a guy that you can throw yeah. the ball deep to. You don't really want to trade for a guy at this point which you could pay a rookie salary to. So yeah. go get Marquise Brown, who also gives you an opportunity to do some really cool things in the backfield as an offensive coordinator. If you want to bring him back there to give you a different sort of look, you can line him up at split in. You can line him up at flanker. You can line him up at the slot, which is basically talking about where that dude lines up. Uh, split in, line of scrimmage, flanker off the line of scrimmage. Slot's obviously in the middle of the, uh, of, the middle of the field. But I really think that that's the move right now. I mean, I'm looking at this, especially since Dan Snyder's taken over calling the first round for the Redskins. Yeah. Had to me signals, quarterback, <laughs> we're no yeah. longer in the in the wide receiver business. We're going to get well, another quarterback. Well, I'd say middle third. I look at it, a, a bunch of teams in that range. Um, you know, Carolina could use an upgrade at receiver. The Giants just lose Odell Beckham. Uh, you know, they signed Golden Tennessee. Tate. Yeah, the, uh, the, the Titans uh, could use an upgrade there. Pittsburgh, to me, is they interesting. They signed Chris Hogan. Um, Pittsburgh is interesting to me, obviously losing Antonio Brown. Um, you don't think so again, they, there's, you don't there's, think... there's a lot of teams in that range, and then that's just before, as you said, Baltimore picks at 22. So there's several teams in that range who could use an upgrade. I Justin seems to be like, the, I mean, you got a dude that could be an heir apparent at Pittsburgh, right? Kid out of Oklahoma State. You sign Chris Hogan to Tennessee. 
I, I forget what they signed to. I want to say they re-up with Curtis Samuel out there at at Carolina. Like I went through this and I was going, where does it make sense yeah. that he's filling a void? Like he's filling a hole that hasn't been filled already. And I think everybody else has kind of showed their hand when it comes to Marquise Brown. And I think that's a really big deal when you're talking about where a guy goes in the yeah. draft. And I don't necessarily want to see the Baltimore Ravens want to move up or down. Yeah. And, and I, that's the need right now. We're talking with RJ Young, OU Insider, OUinsider.com, and also of the sports animal Tulsa on Sundays with his show Fight Me. I don't want to fight you, RJ. <laughs> Listen, <laughs> I I think one of the biggest dark horses in this draft that we could be talking a lot about next year and how did people not understand it is Rodney Anderson. What mm-hmm. do you think? I think he's got to stay healthy. I think Lincoln yeah, actually yeah. said it when he was giving the kid a compliment and saying, look, when he's healthy, he's the best back in this draft. And I was going, yeah, underscore when he's healthy. You know, I think we all like Rodney Anderson's game. I think we all wonder, is he going to hold up for an entire season? Because he hasn't, you know, save uh, 2017. And we all know that, that was a great year for him. But if you are an NFL GM and we know that they are notoriously conservative, you're mm-hmm. going to go with the guy that had the least amount of injuries and more to the point, had the least number of carries. You know, I really do believe that carrying the ball a lot for these guys hurts them on the back end of their NFL careers, which is why Josh Jacobs has kind of skyrocketed up the boards. It's because of the way he played against Georgia, being an SEC offensive player uh, um, of that game, MVP, and the way that he played against Oklahoma, trucking Robert Barnes, and we didn't get to see Rodney uh, Anderson outside of, you know, getting hurt against UCLA. So I think all of that comes into play here. And the safe bet is Josh Jacobs. The explosive bet is Rodney Anderson, which is why I think he's going to be around in the second or third round. Somebody's going to go get him. But you're also yeah. talking about him the way that you may talk about Jeffrey Simmons at Mississippi State, who you know is going to be out for the rest of this year, and he still might go in the first round. Well, you mentioned Josh Jacobs, another Tulsa uh, player from Tulsa. He may be the best story in the draft to me. I don't know if you've had any chance to talk to him at all or be around him, but I'm impressed what he's done with his life. No, and I, I mean, I think that falls in line for Marquise Brown, too. Both of those dudes are, they're not strangers I'll, to being homeless. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, and that, yes. yeah, I mean, work ethic, the the ability to make something out of nothing. I mean, and you'll look at his film, like, I thought it was funny. So, one of the things that I do, because I'm a geek, is I go back and look at how these guys looked in high school and what I saw and what I liked and try to use it to help evaluate guys that we see now. And Josh Jacobs, there wasn't a whole lot of difference between him and Sean Baker Hughes. Do you remember him out of yeah. Edison some yeah. some years back? Maybe. But I just remember going, with, it just, it's about system and fit. And then can you work? Because there was no guarantee that Jacobs was going to come out of Alabama being this guy. Oh. You know, oh. I remember, uh, my goodness, dude out of Hennessy, quarterback, ended up in Nevada after getting offered and signed to Alabama. David Cornwell. Right? I mean, it, it yeah, just doesn't before. always work out for some of these guys, and that's what I'm most impressed about Jacobs is he got an opportunity and then busted his butt on what many people believe is the most talented roster in all of college football to come out as the number one tailback. That's not, a, that's, that's not a small thing at all. Good stuff as always. Uh, we're up against it, but uh, looking forward to uh, this coming Sunday with Mike. Thank you, sir. All right, appreciate it, appreciate it fellas. Good stuff. Good stuff. Thanks. R.J. Young.